By analogy to what we learned in the previous webcast with ACID, we could expect that a base catalyzed mechanism could operate in similar ways where there is either full deprotonation or partial deprotonation, specific or general base catalyzed processes. And indeed, that's exactly what we're going to learn in this webcast. So not too surprisingly, you might anticipate already that specific base catalyzed mechanisms would involve a full deprotonation and the key word is prior, prior to the rate determining step. This is going to require a strong base. In contrast, general base catalyzed mechanisms would operate by deprotonation taking place during the rate determining step and this could be accomplished with a weak base. This partial transfer of a proton is going to show up by what we would draw the how we would draw that transition state structure and in fact our curved arrows will reveal this partial deprotonation. What we're often going to see in base catalyzed mechanisms that operate in this general base catalyzed sense is that there's partial deprotonation simultaneously activating that nucleophile toward uh, its electrophile partner. We'll see an example of that in just a minute but first for the sake of comparison Let's look at an example of a specific base catalyzed mechanism. Here a strong base hydroxide is a catalyst. It doesn't enter into the stoichiometry. We see it on both sides of the equation. And prior to the rate determining step, it's going to undergo a proton transfer. And that proton transfer sets up the conjugate base of this cyanohydrin uh, alcohol group. That oxyanion is all set up to do a beta elimination this, by the way, is the E1CB mechanism that we learned about a few mechanisms a few webcasts ago. And so the water that was produced here will re-equilibrate with the cyanide group that's lost in this beta elimination step. When those re-equilibrate, we regenerate hydroxide and it's ready to enter in the catalytic cycle and start the whole process all over again. Okay, the key step is that here's the rate determining step. Prior to that rate determining step, we had a proton transfer event that took place. Now, let's compare that with a different mechanism. We'll look at the ester hydrolysis mechanism, but we're going to operate under general base catalyzed conditions where there is simultaneous deprotonation activating the nucleophile towards its electrophilic partner. Three things are going to get involved. Our base, our nucleophile, which is going to be activated by our base, and our electrophile three things come together in the rate determining step, that transition state will have to have all three things drawn. Let's look at the curved arrows at how this process takes place. Our base catalyst, triethylamine, begins by deprotonating the, one of the hydrogens on water. As that bond breaks, this bond here, the carbon oxygen or the oxygen hydrogen bond breaks, it sets up the ability of that hydroxide group to act as a nucleophile and these three things have to be in close proximity to one another because as that proton is being transferred the oxygen begins to make a bond with the carbonyl carbon. As that bond is made there's a breaking of the pi bond. This is what we would call a general base catalyzed ADN step. So a general base catalyzed nucleophile addition to a polarized pi bond. That generates our intermediate. This is, by the way, the rate determining step. And so in that rate determining step, we've got simultaneous deprotonation and nucleophile addition. That sets up a beta elimination. The beta elimination expels, expels the phenoxide anion. It re-equilibrates with the conjugate acid of our base, regenerating our base catalyst that's ready to enter into the cycle once again. So that's the key step, this is the key step, this first one, of our general base catalyzed ester hydrolysis.